In this video, I'm going to show you the exact tech stack I use to build out all my software as a service applications. I will cover absolutely everything from the front end languages, the database that I use, the payment services, and finally the libraries and packages that I use. And by the way, this won't be one of those videos where I'm just talking about it from an outsider's perspective. I've been using this tech stack for months and I have generated a decent amount of money for myself as a result of this tech stack. So that being said, let's get into it. So the first aspect we'll obviously cover is the front end and the main library that I use. And for the front end, I use Next.js as well as TypeScript. Now, I don't think Next.js needs much of an introduction. It's a React framework that simply allows us to build full stack applications way easier because everything is in one place. So for example, in the Next.js application, I don't need to install a server. I don't have to have Node.js. Everything is there for me. Like my database is literally here, which we will cover. And I am a big fan of simplicity and easiness, you could say, and productivity. So Next.js does that for me. And on the other hand, I use TypeScript rather than JavaScript as the language I use in Next.js. Because like React, you can have the option between writing it in TypeScript or JavaScript. And I'm just a huge fan of TypeScript when it comes to bigger applications. And by big applications, I simply mean like this example here, right? Let's say we have a bunch of card wrappers that we need for our login page, okay? On the one hand, we could have a bunch of different pages for the login, for the register page and the like, or we could simply make an interface where we have different aspects of it, like the social page, the back button, href, stuff like that. And we can create a page where we can use it over and over again with a type system where we can make sure that we don't forget to include the header title, the back button and stuff like that. So I'll just show you, right? So let's say we want to sign out and this looks a little bit funny because I messed up the card. I promise it does not look like this, but let's say we wanted this page. We also have the login page. We also have the forgot password page. It will be all in one place and we can use that code over and over again. In addition, it saves me so much time when it comes to type systems. So let's say I used the card wrapper in the form. Instead of a header title, let's say I wrote this. It will tell me that I need a string, not a Boolean. You can see here, Boolean is not assignable to type string. It is reminding me that I have to use a login as the title because it is a string. So stuff like that makes me love TypeScript. In addition, makes me love Next.js. Now, in terms of UI libraries, the main one that I use, and you know me guys, you know me. We on this channel just love Shatsy and UI. I wish I was sponsored by them, man, I, I love them. But Shatsy and UI is the UI library of my choice. And why I love it so much is because it's very easy to use. And they actually added a cool new feature, which we will cover. It is light and you can just drag and drop it into your application. For example, let's say we go here, they have a bunch of things, but let's say we wanted the input on the phone thing. So, you know, when you get a password and you need to like put in the numbers here, all you need to do is just press the code and you can copy this and implement it in your app as easy as that. And it's very minimal. You can customize it as much as you want. And frankly, I've been using this for about five months now. And it just makes the design process much easier because there's so much to access. And I'll actually show you what I mean by this. Let's say we wanted the card component from uh, Shad Sien, right? We have it over here. Like we have the card component with the UI and I literally use this on, if we go back here, you can see that we literally use this in our apps for the sign up pages, right? For example, in the roadmap page, you can see over here, we use the card from Shatian. It just makes it easier, okay? I just love it. It's one of my favorite UI libraries. You may, may have your disagreements. Maybe you want Next UI or you want Days UI. Those are also really good UI libraries. But to me, Shatian is the best because their code is the best. It's very light, doesn't take up too much space, and it's extremely customizable. And you're probably asking, Nazar, what the hell are you using for icons, okay? And out of all the videos I saw on people using tech stacks, they never talked about what icons they use and it always bugged me because I, I like learning about that sort of things. And for the icons, I use two in all my applications, okay? It is a mix of material UI icons, which is for me the secondary one I use, but they have so many that I love. Oh, I don't know why I did that. So, you know, they have battery, they have 
whatever, you know, the standard, okay? And on the other hand, my favorite one is React icons. Now, why I love this so much is not because of their special designs, because it's not special, like all of them are usually the same. It is their options on flat color icons. I can't think of a single icon app or like library that has colored icons. And because they have that, I personally like using it. It just makes it look cooler, okay? It just makes the app look freaking cool when you have a colored icon. I don't know what it is. Like, look how nice this looks with the colors. It, the professional, okay? This looks professional and top tier. And I'm not gonna spend too much time here because it's just icons. It's not a big deal. We have Lucid React, React icons, Material UI. There's a million icon libraries, but generally they are the same. But again, I can't think of a single one that has colored one. So I like to use React icons for that. Next up. Okay, we've covered all things front end. We've covered the main languages that we use. We covered the icons that we're utilizing and the UI libraries. However, one thing we did not cover is the authentication. Again, this looks really funny. I'll actually show you the, uh, <laughs> the local version because I fixed it because it just looks funny. There we go. So it looks much better with the padding. Regardless, apologies for that. For my authentication, I use Next Auth. And I think they changed to AuthJS now, but regardless, it's it's fine. You know, it doesn't really matter what it's called. But I love Next Auth because I use Next.js. It's as simple as that. It's very easy to implement. Plus I have a lot of control over what I can use it with. So for example, here I added the um, OAuth for Google Auth and GitHub Auth. And all I had to do was just get the client and client secret ID and then write some code to put it in. You can also use Clerk here, which is a kind of a good option, but I like to customize my own auth and you only have to do your auth authentication once and you can just copy into all your apps. But you know, here's the UI for the authentication. All I had to do was write the front end code to implement like the inputs, like the email username and password. In addition, all I had to do was write some on submit code to send this code to the back end and then write some code to authenticate the user. But personally, I like AuthJS or Next.js, I don't even know what to call it. The one main problem I do have with it is that their documentation freaking sucks. I spent hours and hours just on basic problems and it was kind of annoying, but now that I have that done, it's much easier to manage. Like, you know, it's just an authentication system, but one of my favorite because it's so easy to use. You know, I implemented Google Auth, GitHub Auth, and basic authentication. Now, where I probably get ridiculed and what we will cover next is the back end. And the back end is not my best friend. I, I consider myself a full stack developer because I have to if I'm building software as a service products. However, um, the main one I use is Prisma DB. Now, don't tell me why I use it. I just like it, okay? Most of the stuff we've covered here, I just enjoy using these and it's the main reason why I use them in the first place. So you may agree or disagree. We're humans, we have disagreements, it's totally fine, but I like it. And the main reason why I like it so much is it's basically SQL. So let's say we have the user model here, or let's say actually the course model where we have the courses, okay? We basically just write the code for the title, the description of the, course, the course language and stuff like that. And why I love Prisma so much is it's easiness to communicate with the APIs and the front end. Now it kind of goes hand in hand with Next.js and TypeScript, but let's say here we wanted to get the course in the front end. All I had to do was get the TypeScript code for the API. And then to call the courses model, all I had to do was write this where we're grabbing the course from the database. We're getting the ID of the course, the price, the link, the course language. In addition, we can get a bunch more things, but this is all the code I really had to write to grab the database. And it makes it super easy, like look, so if we write const course is equal to await db.course.findunique, you have access to basically every aspect of the database. So it actually, and it actually gives you options. So let's say we wanted the price. You can see we get the price. Let's say we wanted the course title we have the course title right here as an option. And I can't really think of many databases that do that. And okay, it may be a little bit slower compared to all the databases, but again, we're building SaaS applications. We're not building freaking Google here. Plus it's gotten a lot faster over the past few months even. Like I think it's gone five or six times faster than it has been, but I just love Prisma DB. And you also have like access to the direct database. So let's, all we need to do is run like Prisma DB uh, Studio and we can go right over here and you can see that we have direct access to the users, 
the Stripe customers and all the different um, aspects to the database. And again, it's a personal preference of mine. I just, I've always used Prisma and it just goes so well with Next.js and TypeScript that I've just stuck to it for this long. Now, a big aspect of a software as a service application is the payments, right? You want to make money from this and I want, we all want to make money. And how I do that is we need a payment processor. And on the one hand, one could create their own payment processor and worry the hell out of people hacking them and the like, or you can use Stripe JS. So I changed the price real quick on this course, but let's say we have this authentication course and we want the user to buy it, okay? We could have an option where people can purchase the course and it will directly take us to a Stripe checkout. And this is why I love Stripe so much. It's so easy to implement and I'll actually show you the code real quick. The main thing is not really the code. It's actually the customer comfort. Like when a customer sees this and when I'm buying something from an online store or software, as soon as I see a Stripe checkout page, I just feel comfortable paying. Like when I see something like this, that looks so suspicious. I, I don't trust the site. It just makes me feel very uncomfortable. On the other hand, this just looks better. I don't know why. And uh, it's just really good. And plus, I think they charge like 1% on the transaction. And of course, there's some other transaction fees, but you can manage it. It's, it's okay. And for the ease of mind that you will get, this is amazing. I'll show you what I mean by this. So if we look up Stripe, and go to over here. All we had to do to create the Stripe checkout page was import Stripe and the user and stuff like that, and then create the line items here. So you know the payment page where we have all of this, as well as this, we did that in here where we have the product name, the description from the database, the cost that we wanna charge the user and getting the Stripe customer. So this is basically kind of the code that I used. And there are some other aspects that I had to implement like the backend stuff, but it's very manageable, especially if you're getting started in full stack development, but Stripe, amazing, amazing service. And the final aspect of every software service is the deployment, right? And because we want our users to see our sites and not just be a localhost developer, we need to deploy this on the web. And what I use is Vercel. Now, again, I'm gonna say this again. I like using Vercel. I know there's have been some problems in the past with them and they use a lot of marketing and stuff like that. But Vercel is the fastest, in my opinion, there's probably something faster, but it's very fast. It's quite cheap to use. I think it's like 20 bucks for a group domain and faster uh, running software. Like you can pay to have your code run faster. It's really crazy. And it's very easy to deploy your apps. You know, all you need to do is like just add a project add the domain and you ha literally have your app deployed in two or three minutes. But again, I'm, I'm not going to cover this too much, but this is one that I just love using. I just like it for sale. But yeah, that has been the video. Again, Next.js and TypeScript for the front end, Prisma DB is the back end, Shadsian UI for the UI libraries, payment processors include Stripe.js, and finally, to deploy the site, we use Vercel.com. And by the way, if you want to join our Discord community, I will leave this in the description below. We have the best community out there, literally 50 messages since 902 and it's literally 909. Just an amazing community of people helping each other out, sharing projects, starting businesses. It's one of the best places if you want to be a developer. And we have a lot of entrepreneurial things. So if you want to join, then feel free to join. Also, if you want the free developer roadmap, I will leave this in the description below for those that want to learn web development. But yeah, happy coding. Good luck with your SaaS products and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.